What's going on guys, John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna add bold and italics text to our text editor with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at bold and italics text, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codeby.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Monday morning. Had a great weekend. Went out to Lake Las Vegas, sat in the pool for many, many hours. It was a lot of fun, but now it's time to do some Python. So in this video, we're gonna add a couple of buttons up to the top here that we can do a bold and italics text, and we can toggle on and off, and it's cool. Now, in the future, we'll probably make these buttons look a little cooler, maybe add some Im images or something, but in a lot of text editors at the top, there's a little sort of toolbar strip, and that's sort of what we're gonna start to build in this video, and we'll start it out with bold and italics, and we might add our undo and redo buttons on there just for fun, because we could just slap those in there really easily, copy and paste, no big deal. So, all right, let's go ahead and close this and get started. Head over to our code, I'm in textpad.py using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's come down here and find where we defined our frame, our main frame right here. Let's go ahead and create a toolbar frame. And let's call this toolbar underscore frame. And we'll set this equal to a frame and we wanna put this in root. So now we can toolbar underscore frame dot pack this guy. And we don't really need to give it any padding because this is gonna be sort of just right at the top anyway. But if we wanted to stretch it all the way across to make sure that it's stretched, we can give this a fill of X. Probably don't need to do that, but uh, that'll work. So, okay, now it's time to, let me just copy the name of this thing. Let's head down sort of towards the bottom of our tech, of our code here. And let's just create some buttons. I kind of like to put my buttons at the bottom of my app just because I always know where to look for them, but you can really put these anywhere. So let's create a bold button. And that's gonna be a button, and we wanna put it in toolbar frame. We want the text to equal, let's say bold, and let's give this a command of bold it, <laughs> right? Okay, and now let's go bold underscore button. Let's pack this guy, but actually we don't wanna pack, we want a grid because we want these to all stretch out next to each other it's harder to do that with pack. And we want more control over this, so let's go row equals zero. And we can do this because we're inside of a new frame. So as long as we grid everything in that frame, we can go ahead and grid this, even though for the rest of our app, we've packed everything so far. So row zero, column equals zero. And let's give this a sticky equals west. So it all goes to the, the left-hand side of the app. Yeah, <laughs> right? Okay, so now let's copy this. And let's say, uh, bold button. Now let's come down here and say italics button. Let's just paste this guy in again and we'll change this to italics. There we go. Spell that right. Italics. And we want to put this one in column one. We don't really need to give this a sticky, I don't think. It'll just fall in next to it, but I think you can if you want. So let's go ahead and give this a text of italics and a command of italics it, right? Okay. So while we're at it, let's do our undo and redo buttons just for fun. So let's go uh, undo slash redo buttons. And I'm just gonna paste this twice. And we want this to be in column two and column three. And this will be uh, undo button, I guess undo button, and this one will be redo button. And we'll say uh, undo for the text here, and redo for the text here. And here we just wanna go, just like we did with the uh, menu, we just call my underscore text dot edit underscore undo. And for the second one, for the redo, it's the same thing, except for edit undo becomes edit redo. Okay, so that's all we need for these two buttons. They're already working, so that should be good unless I mess something up, which we'll find out in just a minute. So, all right, let's head over to our bold 
button thing, and we call this bold it. So let's create these this function and this italics it function. So let's head over to our function section here. And there we go down here. Let's go uh, bold text. And underneath it, let's go italics text. So let's define bold it function. And for now, I'm just going to pass. And for here, let's go define italics underscore it. And let's pass. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure all those buttons appeared in the right spot and uh, see if everything's looking okay. So let's go Python textpad.py. And these are all scrunched together. Maybe we want to give this a little pad X. So let's just do that real quick while we're thinking about it. Head back down to our buttons. And where we row and column and sticky dumb, let's just go pad X. And let's just give this five. And we can do that for each of these. Boom, boom. Okay, so let's save this and run it. I like to save and test things as we go. So okay, that looks better. So now we can type some stuff, click undo, click redo, that works. Obviously, these don't work yet, but we haven't created them to work yet. So okay, so far, so good. Let's head back over to the code. Now, to create bold text, we've talked about this in past videos, uh, you can go back and watch those again, if you don't remember, we need to do two things. First, we need to import this font thing because we need to create our own sort of custom font, right? And then we need to set a tag. And with the text widget, tags are everything. You can set tags anywhere you want in the text box. And you designate those tags with a name. And then whatever the name is, you can then program the tag to do something. In this case, we're going to program those tags to change the font. And we're going to change them into the font that we kind of invent right now. So Let's head down here to our bold it function. And let's create our first font. Let's call it bold underscore font. And this is going to be a font dot font. Check out the capitalization there. And we want to put this in my underscore text, the text widget. And then what we want to do is go my underscore text dot C get and then call font. Okay, so that sort of starts to define it. Now we want to configure this font. Right, so we could go bold underscore font dot configure. And what do we want to do? We want to set the weight of the font to bold, right? That weight works with bold, weight does not work with italics. We'll have to change it instead of doing weight for our italics one, we'll do slant instead. But we'll get to that. So, okay, now let's, uh, let's say uh, configure a tag. And here, let's go uh, create our font. So now let's create a tag and let's go, it's going to be a my underscore text in our text widget. We want to go tag, we want to go tag underscore configure. And then what do we want to call this tag? We want to call it bold. And what do we want the font to be? We want the font to equal our bold font, this guy that we just created. So boom, piece of cake. So now we can just run an if statement to say, hey, has this tag that we just created been used in the text box yet? If it has, that means something's already been bold. Well, if something's already been bold and we're clicking this bold button, that means we want to unbold it, right? If a thing hasn't been bolded yet, that means there is no tag. If that's the case, we want to set a tag. So that's what this if statement will do. So let's go uh, if statement to see if tag has been set, I guess. Okay, so let's go if bold, the name of our tag here, in our current tags, which is sort of the uh, keeps track of your current tags, right? So if there is a bold, that means something's already been made bold. And if we're clicking this button, that means we want to unbold it. So we can go my underscore text. And to unbold a thing, all we have to do is remove the tag. If we remove the tag, it's no longer bold. So we can just go tag underscore remove. And what do we want to remove? Well, we want, we want to remove that bold tag because we called it bold right here, right? And where is that tag? Well, whatever we've selected, right? We've highlighted some text. That's why we're either unbolding it or bolding it. We've highlighted it first. What have we highlighted? Well, we've highlighted SEL for select first through SEL.last. And we've kind of looked at this in past videos. And that's it. So whatever's selected first, that would be S here. And last, 
T here and everything in between, that's what's selected, right? That's how Kinter widgets, text widgets select things, first and last, and that. So we take whatever's been selected and remove the bold tag, right? That's it. So that will work for that. Next, we can go else. So if the bold tag doesn't exist, that means we haven't bolded anything yet. And if we're clicking the bold button and there is no bold, that means we want to bold it, right? So that, that's kind of logically correct. So how do we do that? We just add the bold tag. So let's go my underscore text dot tag underscore add. What do we want to add? Well, we want to add our bold tag. Where do we, where do we want to add it? Same thing right here. Select first to select last. So I'm just going to paste that in there because it's Monday and I am lazy. So, okay, that should do the trick. Let's save this and run it. Give it a try. See? All right, so far so good. So this is bold text. We can highlight this. See, it's selected. Click bold. Uh-oh, did not work. What did we do wrong? Current tags is not defined. Oops, we forgot to define current tags. Absolutely, completely did forget that. So let's define current tags. So current underscore tags equals my underscore text, because that's our text widget, right? Dot tag names. And we want to select dot first. That's just how we set this up. So, okay, that should work. Now let's save this and run it. Monday morning, we're bound to make some mistakes, right? Floating around in a pool all day is exhausting. Let me tell you, I'm tired this morning. <laughs> this is bold. Okay, so now we can highlight this and boom, bold. All right, so that works. So now let's go ahead and head back over here and I'm gonna copy all of this. And this is dangerous because this is a lot of code, but I'm gonna come down here and just paste all this in. Uh, but instead of bold font, let's call this italic font or italics font, maybe. Yeah, let's do italics. Italics, italics font. And for here, instead of weight, like I said, weight doesn't work for italics. Instead, this is gonna be slant equals, and it's gonna be italic, not plural, singular, italic, right? So we can come down here and this is gonna be italic. And we don't want the bold font, we want the italics font, because that's what we named it right here, right? Okay, and then we've got to define our current tags. That looks good. Nothing to mess up here. And then here we can go if italic, because this is what we call our tag right here, right? If italic in current tags, then we want to remove italic, right? And else we want to add italic. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Cross our fingers because copying and pasting that much code is always a bad idea. So this is italics text, woo! <laughs> and we can, boom, all right, changes to italics. We can toggle it on and off. We can do bold on and off, and that seems to work. Okay, so we are coming right along with our text editor. We got all our file stuff looking good. We've got cut, copy, paste, undo, redo looking good. We've got bold and italics. Now we can add these bold and italics up here to a menu item if we wanted to, and just call those same functions that these buttons call. Maybe we'll do that if we wanna flesh out this menu bar up here at the top with more stuff. Uh, maybe not, we'll just play it by ear and see how it goes. Uh, leave comments if you have a preference and I'll see what we can see here. But uh, yeah, coming right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. This page is $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.